Today in the news, we dive into the RTX super line of GPUs once again, and we geek out over some benchmarks. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. All right, let's get started with Nvidia. On the last video, we talked about how the super line of RTX cards would position themselves. Well, it looks like we now have more details on the specs thanks to Igor's lab from Tom's Hardware Germany, what it will look like thanks to videocards.net, and the release date. Now, as usual, a few hundred grains of salt are advised with this dose of leaks. So let's run through the specs. The RTX 2060 Super will jump to a TU106-410 chip, same as the current 2070s, and get an extra 2 gigabytes of RAM. That we already knew, but Nvidia will apparently stick to good old 14 gigabits per second memory. The core count though will jump to 34 compute units instead of 30 for an extra 256 CUDA cores. So it's basically going to sit between a standard 2070 and 2060. The RTX 2070 Super will still have the same chip as before, same amount of memory and speed, but it will also benefit from an extra 256 CUDA cores for a total of 2560. So while it won't replace the 2080 in performance, it is getting closer. The RTX 2080, on the other hand, gets a new chip that we've never seen before called the TU-104-450. It's also the only one to benefit from 16 gigabits per second memory, and it will keep its current 8 gigabytes of GDDR6. Its CUDA core count is also getting bumped up, but this time by only 128, making its total CUDA core count at 3072. Videocards.net also got some insider information on how the new Founders Edition Supercards will look like. Here's a mock-up that I made since I didn't quite like the ones that they did. As for the release date, the cards will apparently launch in mid-July, right after AMD's new Navi cards release. That is savagery at its finest. The announcement for the Super line should happen next week though, so we'll get more details by then, unless all of that was fake. I guess Nvidia is really trying to balance things to make sure that no cards is stepping over its better model. In terms of pricing, nothing is confirmed yet, but I think that Nvidia will want to keep its pre premium pricing. Take for example the RTX 2070. AMD claims that their 5700 XT will beat it consistently. With the added CUDA cores though, the supermodel will most likely match or beat the 5700 XT. And since it supports ray tracing, I can see Nvidia go for a slight premium at 550 for the super version and maybe 450 for the regular model. Anyways, that's going to be a lot of cards on the market and personally, I do think that Nvidia will phase out the vanilla RTX cards with this price cut. Just because I don't see them having something like eight different RTX cards, although we know that Nvidia really never had a problem with that, with five different versions of the GTX 1060, three of the 1050, and two of the 1040. What do you guys think? Would you prefer to have a card at every $100 increment, or do you think it can become a problem? Let me know down below. Moving on, let's run through a few stories real quick since we spent a lot of time with Nvidia. First, AMD's new 16 core monster, the 3950X, was spotted on Geekbench beating out an 18 core Intel 9980XE. The single core performance looks promising, beating out the Intel with close to 400 points, but the multi-core score is astonishing with a 20,000 points lead. While this does look like an incredible lead in multi-core, it might be due to Intel's instruction management. For example, when executing AVX 512 workloads, Intel's CPU clock speeds drops dramatically, or is, well, technically just limited. On the other hand, we don't know how Ryzen 3000 reacts to different instruction sets. Anyways, it's still a pretty incredible lead. By the way, 749 for that CPU, I mean, I get that it's technically a great deal already, but come on AMD, my pockets need a little padding, and you're supposed to be like ultra budget. Then we have GTA 5, which has had a casino in the game since launch, but you can never actually get into it. Well, it looks like five and a half years later, it will finally open its doors. After that, Starfield, the new space game from Bethesda, will apparently feature space flight that is as dangerous as flying in a plane in the 40s. I don't know what that means, but I'm starting to feel like this could be uh, Bethesda's version of No Man's Sky. Speaking of No Man's Sky, a group of dedicated fans bought a billboard next to their office to thank them for the hard work on their game. I have to admit, it had a really rocky start, but the game did evolve really nicely. 
Then we have ray tracing coming to a game that could really benefit from it, Doom Eternal. Not only that, but Marty Stratton from id Software said that they will do it better than everybody else. That's a pretty bold statement, but with all the fire and bloom, I see how it has the potential. All right, that was a lot of news. Anyways, guys, that concludes it for today. Hopefully you've enjoyed. If you have any questions, leave them down below. It would be greatly appreciated. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Oh. Oh, God, I forgot. There was a Coke can on my desk. Ah, whatever. A little bit of advertising.